Hello and good morning everyone. My name is Poi Ravel and I am a pathology resident at North Shore University Health System. The abstract I'm presenting is about do COVID antibodies cross-react with the Bioplex 2200 HIV assay, which is an antigen antibody differentiating combination screening assay. And there are no financial conflicts of interest to disclose. Now, a little bit about the background. After COVID-19 virus surge, the dynamics of testing and interpretation have changed a lot. And we have seen multiple COVID-19 tests and vaccines developed in small amount of time. As much is not known and we are still learning about the virus, it is important that we interpret all test results with keeping COVID in mind. Last year, between August to October, we encountered four repeatedly false positive samples for HIV. Those four samples were tested reactive on Bioplex HIV antigen antibody screening assay. They were rechecked in duplicates on the same lot number at our lab, and the results were same as the previous run. At North Shore Core Lab, we do HIV screening with Bioplex 2200 HIV antigen antibody test, which is a multiplex flow immunoassay. And it gives a qualitative detection and differentiation between HIV 1P24 antigen, HIV 1 antibody, and HIV 2 antibody in serum or plasma. The results are reported as index where less than one is non reactive and one or more than one is reactive. Any reactive results are confirmed on BioRed Genius assay or nucleic acid amplification test, which is also known as NAT. The system output of the Bioplex HIV assay will be different if both HIV-1 and HIV-2 antibodies have indexed more than one. So if HIV-1 antibody index is at least five-fold the HIV-2 antibody index, the system output will be HIV-1 reactive with its index and HIV-2 non-reactive without the index. And it can be applied vice versa as well. In a situation where there is a less than five-fold difference between HIV-1 and HIV-2 antibody index, the system output comes as reactive undifferentiated with indices for both HIV-1 and HIV-2 antibodies. Now this is the table showing in-house Bioplex HIV results with index for our four patient samples. The analytes are HIV-1 antibody, HIV-1 antigen, and HIV-2 antibody. HIV antigen antibody is reflected reactive when any of these analytes are reactive. Two columns next to that shows initial run and duplicate run results with index. The patient sample P1234 showed reactive undifferentiated for HIV-1 and 2 antibodies. Because if you look at the index, it is 5.9 and 3.34 for P1, 10.74, and 8.22 for P2, 3.22 and 2.85 for P3, and 2.40 and 2.14 for patient 4. So there is no 5 fold difference between them, and hence the reactive undifferentiated results for all four patients. Meanwhile, P3 sample also showed reactivity for HIV 1 antigen. So now, as per our protocol for HIV reactive patients, we ran samples on Genius and NAT. And this is the table showing results of the Genius assay and NAT for those four patients. Both showed that the samples are negative for HIV-1 and 2. So reactive results on Bioplex HIV and negative results on BioRed Genius HIV assay and NAT indicates false positivity in those four samples. All of our patients had diverse history except for the COVID vaccination by Pfizer. So in the study, our aim is to determine the cause of false positivity in our four patient samples and evaluate the potential role of COVID infection and vaccination antibodies in the false reactivity of those samples. Methods and results. So we de-identified four in-house patient samples and sent it to BioRed laboratories for further workup. Samples were tested again on Bioplex HIV with a different lot and Genius HIV. And the results were concordant with the in-house false positive results. Furthermore, three cohorts were evaluated for COVID antibodies cross-reactivity with HIV screening assay. Cohort 1, 
So cohort one included 121 naturally infected patient samples from external vendor. And this cohort was used to evaluate COVID antibodies cross reactivity with HIV screening assay in naturally infected patients. The samples were evaluated on Bioplex HIV antigen antibody assay and the positive ones were confirmed on Genius HIV at BioRed laboratories. Two out of 121 naturally infected patient samples were tested reactive for HIV-1 antibody on Bioplex HIV assay. They were confirmed positive on Genius HIV as well, indicating that both samples were true positive samples. So we can say that there was no apparent cross reactivity found with naturally infected patient samples in cohort one. Cohort two. Cohort 2 included 91 known vaccinated patient samples from external vendor, and they were used to evaluate COVID antibodies cross reactivity with HIV screening assay in COVID vaccinated patients. Among 91 samples, 34 were J&J vaccinated, 26 were Pfizer vaccinated, and 31 were Moderna vaccinated samples. 91 samples were tested on Bioplex HIV antigen antibody assay and reactive samples were evaluated on BioRed Genius HIV assay at BioRed laboratories. Out of 91 samples, one J&J and one Moderna vaccinated patient sample tested reactive on Bioplex HIV assay. But both of the samples didn't conform on Genius HIV assay, indicating them as false positive HIV samples. And since only two samples tested false positive for HIV, this indicates there is no apparent COVID antibody cross reactivity in vaccinated patient samples. And this is the table showing false positive samples in detail. As you can see here, JNJ sample was found to be reactive for HIV-1 antigen, and Moderna sample was reactive undifferentiated for HIV-1 and 2 antibodies. Pfizer vaccinated samples did not show any reactivity here. And now cohort three. So cohort three included 580 presumed normal patient samples from external vendor after 2019. This cohort was used to evaluate and compare COVID antibodies cross reactivity with HIV screening assays in COVID positive and negative patient samples. The samples were evaluated on Bioplex HIV assay and BioRed SARS-CoV-2 IgG assay at BioRed laboratories. Fisher's exact test used to calculate p-value for sensitivity and specificity in COVID positive and negative cohorts and p-value less than 0.05 was considered as significant. And now briefly about the BioRed SARS-CoV-2 IgG assay. It detects IgG antibodies against receptor binding domain, spike 1 and 2 and nucleocapsid protein in serum and plasma. Positive test indicates recent and prior infection or acquired immunity from vaccination. It's a CE marked assay in Europe and it is not available in USA. And now coming back to the cohort three, here 580 presumed normal samples were evaluated on BioRed SARS-CoV-2 IgG assay. And we found 393 samples positive here. Then all the samples were evaluated on Bioplex HIV assay. We found nine samples to be reactive, in which seven were reactive for HIV-1 antibody, and two samples were HIV antigen reactive. Further, all nine samples were tested on Genius HIV, in which seven samples confirmed reactive, indicating true positivity, and two samples, which are HIV antigen reactive, did not confirm on Genius HIV, indicating false positivity. And this is the flowchart showing the distribution of samples in cohort three. We had 580 samples in cohort three, which got divided into two groups, COVID positive and negative group by SARS-CoV IgG assay. COVID positive group had 393 samples and 187 samples were there in COVID negative group. Both COVID positive and negative samples got tested on Bioplex HIV. In COVID positive groups, eight samples were HIV positive. They were further tested on Genius and seven showed reactivity while one did not confirm on Genius assay. So we have one false positive HIV in COVID positive group. 
And if you can look at the COVID negative group, we found one false positive sample in COVID negative group as well. So in the end, we had one false positive in both the groups, COVID positive and negative. This results imply that there is no cross reactivity between COVID antibodies and HIV assay in cohort three. Sensitivity and specificity of Bioplex HIV assay were calculated for both COVID positive and negative groups. And the Fisher's exact test p-value for sensitivity was one, while specificity was 0.5466 which were not significant statistically. So in conclusion, we can say that the results from all three cohorts showed no correlation between COVID antibodies and false positive HIV screening results. False positivity of those four samples were likely due to various residual non-specific immunoassay binding, which is also known as NSB. And also the data analysis at our institution reflected Bioplex HIV assay specificity for the time period range from 99.87 to 99.89%, which is within the manufacturer's claimed range. And thank you so much for listening. I'll be happy to answer any questions.